Joe Wins Project Podcast. Welcome, everyone, to another installment of the Joe Wins Project Podcast. Thank you very much for joining. I hope people are enjoying this podcast. It's it's a different kind of laid back atmosphere. I, I enjoy it very much, to tell you the truth. Uh, so it's just uh, you know having a good time, man. Talking about some stories, sharing it with people, and hopefully they enjoy it. Uh, so today is a rainy, rainy day. It is 2 o'clock p.m. Eastern Standard Time, straight up. We have had so much rain. Now, yesterday was nice, but two or three days before that, it just rained just constantly. So I'm sitting here in this little makeshift studio, <laughs> getting ready to uh do my recording for the podcast and my wife calls she's out in the car her and her uh her daughter her oldest daughter and my wife says i'm stuck in the yard and i was like you're stuck in the yard she was trying to get out um see we live out in the country so you know of course we have a driveway but we like to park up here up top where the where the door is so we can get you know just get to the car real quick without having to walk down this little hill because when you walk down that little hill, it can be really treacherous when it rains and, you know, bad weather. But with all the rain we've had, just trying to get out the into the road after, up here on the upper part of the yard <laughs> into the road, was she was stuck. And her, her wheels were just spinning, so we had to get out there. Me and her daughter had to push. Finally got her out. So she was able to take off to her daughter's appointment. Thank goodness. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, what else is going to happen today? I'll tell you, it's uh, Thursday. Thank goodness it's technically my Friday. I have to leave here in just about, uh, I'd say about an hour to head to work. And uh, I drive a truck for a living. Uh, I love to do daily vlogs. Uh, I'm trying my hand at these little podcasts here. Uh, guitar related videos, and stuff of that nature. So if this is your first time viewing this or hearing this, uh, my name's Joe. Welcome to my channel. And I would hope you would subscribe. You know, be sure to check the links below if you would like to find more information about me. I got t shirts, hoodies, and other apparel in my store. Love to have you. So, also, it is today is Ace Freely's birthday. And as you could tell in the title of this podcast, it's uh, going to be about Ace Freely. So, uh, let me start by saying, you know, Kiss, uh, of course, they are a, you know, huge, huge name. When you say the, the word Kiss, you know, especially when it pertains to music, people know who that is. Um, I've never been a really huge Kiss fan. I, I mean, it's not that I, it's not that I don't like them. I just, I don't know. I've just never been a huge fan of them. There's a couple of songs by them I like, but that's pretty much far as it goes. Uh... I've always been really infatuated with the story behind them, their history, how they got started, and the amount of legions of fans known as the Kiss Army. It's just it's mind blowing how popular they had become, especially in the in their heyday in the seventies. You know, it was just it was unbelievable. Uh, but ironically, a few years a few years ago, excuse me. Um, I went to a tattoo parlor and got <laughs> and got a tattoo, my one and only tattoo. It's right on my upper left arm here, and it's a tattoo of Ace Freely. It's you know when he had his face on his solo album when he was in Kiss when they all you know each of them did a solo album, and uh, of course Ace's solo album and Kiss was the only one to go gold. You know, it outsold all the other members. <laughs> it's like, what does that tell you? You know, um, so I got Ace's tattoo, uh, tattoo of Ace, I should say, excuse me, on my arm here because I always thought he looked the coolest. Now, I know that kind of contradicts itself, what I just said a minute ago, that I wasn't a real huge fan of Kiss. I'm, but, yeah, like I said, I didn't, you know, it's not that I dislike them. I just didn't really get into their music as much. I just, it just, you know, wasn't really my cup of tea. But I always thought they looked cool, you know. I was like, man, and then and um, Ace Ace's makeup I always thought was the coolest, and really that was a, a genius idea if you look back and just think about it with the makeup and everything because they're they they look timeless, you know. Like now they're doing their thing, of course, with just 
Gene Simmons and Paul Stanley, but when they have the makeup on, they still look the same as they did in the 70s. You can't tell that they're, you know, 40 years older, you know. <clears throat> so it's really a, a great idea that they did that. I thought that was cool. But, but you know, a lot of people might kind of wonder, or maybe they know, maybe maybe not. Why did Ace leave Kiss? Why? What, what made him come upon that decision to say hey look i'm i'm leaving it just you know uh of course we all know about later in the 90s and the 2000 you know you had the they reunited with the when they did the unplug thing on mtv and that sparked a reunion tour and then and then they had the farewell farewell tour and this and that and of course it you know it it went back to where it started you know full circle uh Kind of crazy. But I have Ace Freely's book here, No Regrets. And I know you've probably seen the thumbnails for it here in the in the screenshots on this podcast if you're if you have your video on. Um so I'm gonna read some of this out of Ace's book, No Regrets. Uh just as a disclaimer here, I all I own no rights to this book uh, whatsoever. All the rights go to Ace Freely and his partners who were in this book uh together. I'm just reading this for entertainment purposes only. Okay. So here we go. We're going to get in this uh, right here on Ace Frehley's book. Um, and this is where he talks about where, uh, why he left Kiss. Okay. So here we go. I felt trapped. And so I did what I always did when I was anxious. I escalated my alcohol and drug use to numb myself. It's hard to point a finger at one particular problem. Each thing fed something else. The drugs, the drinking, the band, and my marriage. Obviously, if I wasn't drinking and doing all the drugs, my judgment wouldn't have been so clouded, and I might have made a more intelligent and sound decision. But it wasn't like I decided overnight. I've been thinking seriously about leaving Kiss for more than a year, maybe longer. After the success of my solo album, I knew I was more creative when I had some distance from other guys in the band. So it was probably only a matter of time before we split. And again, it was all about the money for them. It was never about the money for me. I sat in my attorney's office one afternoon and listened to him make his case. The numbers were staggering. We just renegotiated our deal to the tune of nearly $15 million. That didn't include merchandising or concert revenue, which combined were probably worth another $20 million per person. Holy smokes. Just let me pause right there for a second. $20 million a person. And this is in the early 80s. Oh my goodness gracious, 20 million. I mean, can that's just whew, that's unbelievable. That's that's crazy. Okay. Let's resume, shall we? Please, Ace, my attorney said, think about this very carefully. I had been thinking carefully, if not clearly. Here I was, a kid from the Bronx, a guy who had known what it was like to get by on practically nothing, and now I had a mansion in Connecticut, a fleet of cars, and more money that I could spend. But who did I know up there? Who were my friends? My Coke dealer? I was suffering from an, assort from an assortment of uh, maladies, culture shock, and loneliness among them. I was spinning out of control, and I didn't know how to stop. About the only place where I felt like I had any power was my professional life. Maybe if I quit KISS everything else would fall into place. To this day, I still believe that if I hadn't left the band, they would have found me dead somewhere. I would have OD'd or driven my car into a tree and ended it all. I told that to my attorney, and his response was one of disbelief. But Ace, it's $15 million. That buys a lot of therapy. I just shook my head. You're not listening to me. And I don't know how else to explain this to you. I'm going to kill myself if I don't get out of this situation. 
Gene eventually weighed in as well, tried to convince me that there was plenty of opportunity for me to do side projects, even while working with KISS. Go off and do your own records, he said. We don't care. Have fun, but don't quit the band. It's not necessary. No one understood I needed to get away from them. They didn't approve of my lifestyle, and I didn't approve of what they were doing with the band. I couldn't be a part of it anymore. What's worse than having a ton of money and not having a good time? I would gladly have given up millions to walk away. In fact, I did. Although it wasn't officially announced until 1983, I quit the band in 1982, and I think it saved my life. Barely. So there you go. That's uh, an excerpt from Ace Frehley's book, uh, No Regrets. I believe this came out in 2011. Um, and I'm thinking he's coming out with another book, I believe. I'm not 100% sure on that. I I've heard him talk about it before in interviews, but, you know... Who knows if he's going to or not. I think it would be pretty cool, but... Uh, wow, 20 million. Ace walks away from Kiss. Uh, he starts doing his solo thing, which was what Fraley's comment. Uh, that did pretty good back in the day. I remember seeing a couple of videos here and there on MTV. Uh, when MTV was actually good. Y'all remember that? Oh, Lord. Um, but I, you know... I mean, let's let's face it. He never had the same success or the equal success as he did when he was in Kiss, you know. But but he had to get it out of there. You know, everybody, you know, he had to make a decision, and that's what he wanted to do. He wanted to leave. Um, of course, as you know, Peter Chris left first, uh, and then later Ace left. You know, so. Um, from what I understand from his book here, later on when they reunited and they went on tour, it was they did fine in the beginning. Of course, old habits started coming back up. You know, things were popping up here and there. And uh, Peter Chris got upset about some stuff and and uh, was going to leave. And then uh, so uh, there was a couple of times where Ace Freely was really late getting to a, a performance. And they actually had Tommy Thayer in the wings dressed up in Ace's makeup. And... Uh, there was at one time where uh, Ace Freely, I can't remember the exact moment in time in this book. I can't remember if it was in the dressing room or on the plane. Uh, Ace Freely punched Tommy Thayer in the face. <laughs> I can't remember what over, but I was like, my God. So, but Tommy Thayer, if I remember right, has really been in and around Kiss for a long time. He's been like, uh, uh, what was it he said? He, he, uh, was like a gopher, you know, he'd go get him coffee and all that. He kind of worked his way up the ladder over the years, believe it or not. And, uh, but I'll, you know, Tommy Thayer also excellent guitar player, but, but of course, you know, with the, uh, reunion tour of Kiss in the early 2000s, and all that, he left again and then they had Tommy Thayer step in. It was like that for years and it still is now, you know, so it, it kind of makes you wonder, you know, I mean, it's it's amazing for me to see uh, when I, what was it, last summer? Was it last summer, I believe, when Kiss was doing some dates in other countries and it showed like a shot of the crowd and it was just unbelievable, the amount of people that were there. And, and I was like, my God, you know, so, but it makes, it's made me wonder, you know, I'm like, how much longer are they going to keep doing this? You know, are they going to eventually replace Gene and Paul? And have just like the ultimate Kiss tribute man. I believe, don't quote me on this, but I believe Gene or Paul, one or the other, has stated that sooner or later that is what's going to happen. Because, you know, these guys got to retire sooner or later. You know, um, uh, so, but, uh, you know, who knows what you're going to do. And uh, not you know, speaking of books, you know, I, I got uh, Paul Stanley's audio book last year and uh, one of Gene Simmons' books. They're really good. I mean, I have to, I have to give it up to these guys, man. They they uh, Paul Stanley narrated his own book and Gene Simmons narrated his own book, and it was, I was, I was like, wow, man. You know, it was really cool. You know, a, a good narrator makes for a good audio book, in my opinion. And these guys did phenomenal. I was like, wow. You know. Um, I had a newfound respect for both of them after hearing their book, you know, because, you know, 
sometimes you get first impressions about stuff when you don't when you don't really know somebody, which is human nature anyway. Uh, but uh, they seem like good guys, man. You know, and and uh, Gene Simmons, uh, you know, came over here and then and then uh, he was like a uh, what was he like an elementary school teacher for like half a year, I believe something like that. And then he met Paul, and then they you know started. Uh, forming Kiss in the early, early, early stages, you know, before they were anybody knew who they were, and uh, but his story is really good and it makes you wonder how did Gene Simmons get Shannon Tweed? My God, just goes to show you what money can do <laughs> in certain cases, and and being a rock star too, you know. My God, Shannon Tweed, man, holy smokes, uh, man, so kind of wild, kind of. Kind of funny sometimes when you think about it, but uh, yeah, Ace Freely. What what you know? He's really had a lot of bouts with, uh, of course, drugs and drinking and rehab. He's been sober for quite some time now. Quite some time he's been so sober. So congratulations to Ace Freely on that, man. That's awesome. Because I can only imagine living a, a lifestyle of rock and roll when you're young, being on the road. You know. Drugs and alcohol are right there. They're so prevalent. You know, it's just, it's there to for whatever you want to do. The excesses of different kind of sins are there, you know, and it just, it's just part of that culture. Uh, but to do that for so many years and get used to that and to rely on like uh, cocaine and stuff every day to function, and he, he was able to kick that. Anybody that can do that, that's amazing. That's awesome. Everybody has their vices. I know I have mine. Everybody has some sort of vices, you know, everybody. It might be something real minimal. It might be something real major. It's just everybody's different. So, uh, but yeah. So what will KISS do in the future? Have no clue. We can all make our own assumptions, you know. I don't know. But, you know, real quick before I go, you know, what? what's really cool, man, is that, uh, or what I thought was interesting, when Ace left, you know, speaking of this book here, and he, he departed, you know, they brought in uh, Vinnie Vincent. I think his real name was Vincent Caruso or something like that. I might have that wrong. But Vinnie Vincent, an amazing guitar player, um, but he liked to shred so much, like a Yngwie Malmsteen type deal, you know. Uh, but, you know, he was there for a while, and he left, and then he come out with Vinnie Vincent Invasion, which I had that. I recently just rebought that album off Amazon, the uh, MP3 album, and it's I I enjoy it. I don't I just do. I mean, there's a couple of songs on that I really enjoy. I really I really like a lot. So I thought it was really cool. Vinnie Vincent, wow, he just disappeared into obscurity. I mean, he's he's had some weird things going on in his life. There's a lot of stuff on YouTube. If you a lot of podcasts about him, uh, people have done. So I. I don't have all that kind of information like these guys have. These guys have really put in the time and research about Benny Vincent. So there's some stuff on YouTube. You could research that if you would like to do that. As for me, I'm going to wrap it up for this, another edition of the Joe Wentz Project podcast. Like I said, please check the links below to find out more about me. If you'd like to do that, my t-shirts are in my store. Check them out. We'd love to have you stop by. I hope everybody has a great day. Thank you for listening. Thank you for tuning in. I really appreciate it. If you haven't subscribed to this channel, please subscribe. I'd love to have you. That would be awesome. And until next time, this is Joe for the Gentleman's Project. We'll see you then. Peace out.